Nigeria currently produces an estimated uh, 8,000, uh, well, 8,000 million standard cubic feet of gas per day, which industry professionals say are more than enough to satisfy the country's uh, current local demand of uh, about a whole lot more of that in terms of standard cubic feet. But what are the dynamics around Nigeria's natural gas availability and supply? Let's take the conversation to Houston, Texas, where engineer Fis uh, Fisoya Delano, president and CEO of Delphi Ventura Group, is uh, joining us. Great to have you, sir. Good evening to you. Thank you so much for being with us. So what are the uh, dynamics around Nigeria's domestic natural gas um, availability and supply? Uh, thank you very much, Bresson. Thanks for inviting me to participate in this um, in this uh, program and uh, to throw some light on the on the natural gas supply and availability situation. Just as you said, Nigeria produces about eight thousand million side cubic feet of gas per day, and uh, that is what we produce that comes out of the ground every blessed day. And our level of consumption is at, right now at best, 2024, 1.1,800 1, million cubic feet of gas per day. So you see that even if we go multiples, if the market doubles or triples, we are producing sufficient gas to meet our current demand and even our future demand. So. The question now is, every now and again, we encounter in the media that our electricity is constrained by gas, our um, industry, industrial growth may be constrained by gas, some exports are constrained by gas. So let us understand what is going on. So the first thing I want to do this, this evening is to first of all break down that 8,000 million cubic feet of gas per day production that we have. First of all, that 8,000 cubic feet of gas per day production is made up of associated gas production, which is a function of the oil, and that is the, is the majority. That is about 4.6 or 4,600 million out of the 8,000. And then non-associated gas, which is about 3, 3.9 uh, of that um eight 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 thousand the non-associated gas has been growing steadily from about one thousand in 2001 all the way to the 3.6 that we have in 2020 uh when we looked at the 2020 data for some detailed analysis so we have non-associated gas and as associated gas now let us now split it again and see what component. Out of this eight BCF made up of non-associated gas and associated gas, what's going on? Then we have 1.2 to 1.8 for domestic consumption. That is billion now. And then we flare as at 2020, about 700. Then we re-inject about 2.6 billion every day because we do not have market for them so three 37 percent of that 8.8 8, 8, 8, does not get to market and that's where the opportunity lies and most of that 37 percent or about 3.2 is associated gas because for non-associated gas, if you cannot market a non-associated gas, we just close the tap. We close the valve and we don't produce it. So most of the uh, gas that non-associated gas that we produce goes for export. But the associated gas, which is the one that comes up with the oil, we use some of it for domestic and then we inject some and then we flare uh, some and we've been doing pretty well in reduction of flaring. The flaring reduction has been very aggressive, and uh, we we down to the un unit uh, percentage of associated gas. And many uh, some um, producers have even announced like total total flare out. They yeah, they announced that they have achieved total flare out in uh, December two thousand and twenty three. 
So we are moving in the right direction, which means that more and more associated gas is going to be there to meet today's demand and future demands. That even if the demand doubles, we have sufficient associated gas to meet the demand. And why is associated gas important? Because that's the cheapest source of gas we can get. Because most of the revenue from the oil revenue has covered the cost of the associated gas, because that is the beauty of associated gas. So the, there is no need for additional investment to be made to deliver associated gas to the warehead. So all we now need to be concerned about is how to move it from the warehead through the uh, um, field collection system to gas processing on the way to market. So those are some of the dynamics that we have, and that is also the hope and the, and the, uh, that, that we share that the resources there on production already. And that gives us plenty of space to, to work on to meet the increasing demand for gas in our domestic market. All right. Thank you so much uh, for the breakdown. So what about the uh, supply chain? What about the, the, who are the suppliers? Now, if we look at the supply chain, the suppliers are the key uh, producers um, in, the, in the market, like the upstream producers. They produce the uh, oil. That is folks like the international oil companies, like uh, MPDC also, like uh, the independents, uh, first AMP, uh, such as um, uh, ITO, and uh, those are the producers. And each producer is assigned a percentage for domestic supply obligation. That is a percentage of whatever um, gas they produce is committed to the domestic market. Now, these suppliers now will gather the gas from their, from their fields to their flow station, from the flow station, and there are in, in onshore flow station, offshore flow station, uh, like in Ebocha, like in Ugeli, uh, and so on. They, they gather that, and then through gravity, separate the oil from the gas, and then the oil goes to, to the terminal for sales, and then the gas now goes to for gas processing, because the raw gas or the unprocessed gas is most likely unsuitable for direct consumption. So it has to go for gas processing. The gas processing will process the gas to the sales specification. The sales specification is specified in the gas sales agreement with the buyer. So the buyer, whether it's a power plant, whether it's industry or, uh, 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 or for export, will specify the sales specification. Now, all these have been streamlined in the network code that was passed in 2020. So now, if you are passing the gas through a particular set of um, uh, pipeline infrastructure, the specification is already articulated in the network code. So all the various inlets into the gas is to that network code. Now from that, so it goes to the transportation uh, channel, the uh, pipeline system. So we have the Western pipeline system, we have the Northern pipeline system, we have the Eastern systems. Now the, each of these systems, there can be major differences. Like the Eastern system, which is where gas utilization started in Nigeria, the way it grew, it was, project by project, point to point, like gas supply to uh, NATO, um, NAFCOM, gas supply to Anunam Smelter, gas supply to AFAM in the 1960s, gas supply to, to different offtake points. So there are point to point delivery points. So there is no real uh, aggregation of uh, uh, the, uh, a systemic and dynamic flow. But in the, in the Western system, we have um, a backbone. That is the Extravos to Lagos pipeline system. So that's a major backbone, like a fishbone. We have, we have multiple uh, producers that can inject gas into the, into, the, into the trunk line. So we can take gas from Sapele, take gas from Extravos, from ODD, and all the various produce, uh, gas processing centers in that axis and then deliver the gas to different off-takers, 
like all the power plants in in Omotosho, in Papalanto, in Geregu, and so on and so forth, all the way to the West Africa gas pipeline. So that is the West Africa, um, that's the Western Nigeria pipeline system. Now the the northern system offshoots from there. It goes from Oben to Ajakuta, and then with the AKK that is under construction, that hopefully by the end of 2024, it will be commissioned. That now takes it all the way to Kaduda Kanu. So this structure that we see in the west and in the in the in the north are trunk lines, backbones like a fishbone, which is totally different from what exists in the east. So most of it, and then this pipeline system, the way they've been constructed, will be open access. That is any producer that can get his gas into that infrastructure in an undiscriminated, it will be in a, in a third party open access without discrimination. So you can be there in your field in Focados and get your gas all the way to, to Lagos and even all the way to Ghana because the uh, West Africa gas pipeline system is also open access. Now, with that infrastructure in place, what we now have is that the power plants will now buy the gas from the producer. That is, when we buy gas from Chevron and, and um, Sapele uh, power plant, we buy gas. Uh, Along ago, we buy gas. So we have gas sales agreements between the uh, power plant and the producer. So the, produce, the power plant now owns the gas. So it's the power plant that now ships the gas and pays the gas infrastructure owner for transportation, and it takes on the gas. Now, I need to point out that most of the gas we consume domestically is 80% is supplied by five producers. The five producers, namely NPDC, um, Chevron, Seplat, uh, Falcon, and uh, Naok. Those are the, they supply about 80% of the gas that goes into the domestic uh, market. Now, the domestic uh, supply obligation performance, as uh, published in, uh, uh, by the regulator in 2023, is about 55%, uh, based on the volume that was set as the market demand, anticipated market demand for 2023, which was set at about 3.5 billion uh, cubic feet of gas per day. So we see different, different factors that are coming into play to determine uh, the availability of gas. Now, in terms of the plumbing, what we know from the data is that in 2023, about 1.3 to 1.8 million cubic feet of gas was delivered. So we have plumbing to deliver that volume in operational. And we know that that is even lower than the uh, nameplate capacity of that pipeline because the Exavos to Lagos pipeline system was initially built to be 1.1 billion cubic feet. It was recently looped, that is doubled in, in capacity by laying a parallel pipeline to 2.2. The open to Ajakuta is two. AKK is two billion cubic feet of gas per day. Very so we have the infrastructure and the infrastructure is growing every day. All right. Well, uh, uh, we do thank you so much, Mr. Fisayo Delano, the uh, president and CEO of the Delphi Ventura Group LLC, uh, live from Houston, Texas, to give us that deep dive on Nigeria's gas infrastructure. We thank you so much for your time.